Well, hello everyone. Welcome back to Hinterland. Happy Monday. We are working on harvest. So I have already done up a couple of fields. Fields one and two. I think they were both canola, if I'm not mistaken. Let's take a look here. Yeah, both canola. Got about 50,000 liters. You know, I wonder, was this was... Yeah, they were both canola. Okay, I just wanted to make sure. I I have barley in my brain, but uh, looks like I missed a little bit here, didn't it? That doesn't matter much. And we've got field one over here taken care of. Oh, that's right. We had barley on this field over here. That's why we've got a bunch of barley sitting in our silo. That makes sense. All right. <clears throat> Nothing new to show you, believe it or not. I have not added anything to the map since we last spoke. I have done one thing, though. Our class harvester has been exchanged. I just couldn't get the sound volume down on that other one. It was brutally loud. <clears throat> and as much as I tried to, I guess, get the volume correct and stuff, it just wasn't happening. So I exchanged it for this one. They're basically identical as far as um, specs go, same horsepower, same fill volume, all that fun stuff. This one is just considerably quieter. Yeah, makes it a little easier to speak around, that's for sure. Let's go ahead and get this course play, I think. We'll get course play on this field. And I can run the trailer. Sounds like a plan. Let's see here. We'll create a job. Um, that does not look right. Create a job. There we go. It is picking the right field. Let's open this up. We can start the worker on center. We can do smooth. Actually, we can do sharp corners on this one. Uh, headlands. I think two headlands will work. And up and down. Let's generate a course. That looks pretty good. Let's drive over towards the beginning. Get the course play worker close to where their starting point is. So after this field, we are going to have some sunflowers way back yonder coming up here pretty soon, I would think. I'm not exactly sure what we're going to do with these fields. We're probably going to have to get them prepped pretty soon but we've got a couple months we're not going to do oil seed or poplar or grass so it's going to be a couple months until we get to unless we do canola again i wouldn't mind getting maybe some corn going eventually would be nice uh where is my starting am i there it is right here I was, oh, I was thinking along the edge, but that is not true. Let's turn this beast around. I think it's this way. That looks about right. And uh, first waypoint. And let's get it kicked off. I think this is actually a giant's. I forget if this is the giant's. Harvester, or is this? No, it's not. Model year 2023 G GEFD 25. Hmm, it is a mod. It's a nice looking harvester, though. It's a little dirty already because I used it for a couple of fields. Looks like it's going to get the job done. And let's go over and grab our cloths. Get it hooked up to our wagon so we can make sure and be ready for... Getting this baby unloaded. Let's go inside here. I can line her up a little bit better. This wagon has proven to be very handy already. I like the... Uh, I like the extra fill volume on it over the cloths wagon that we had before. Nice to have a little bit more room, that's for sure. Looking forward to using our new cultivator. I did, um, yeah, I sold 
our cedar. Our drill is gone. I didn't replace it yet. <clears throat> if I'm being honest, I really don't know what we're going to do. <laughs> what exactly we're going to do for a drill. Oh, I'm glad it's leaving a windrow. I forgot to check on that, but it looks like Courseplay took care of that for me. So thank you, Courseplay. So we are without a cedar right now. Um, not that it's hurting us at the moment, but we will need to get one eventually. I was thinking we'd wait till next month to see if anything comes up in the used market. Because I don't think there's anything in there now. Nope, nothing's showing up now. I'll show you the cedar I have in mind. If nothing shows up. I was actually thinking this... Vaderstead would be a nice cedar for us. It's um, 8 meters, which is a little bit nicer than the one we had. We had a 4.5 meter. Uh, I think it's still in here, actually. We had this one right here. I tried this one. I thought it was all right, but I w didn't really care for the unfolding and, and so on. Oh, this is the one I'd really like, though. That's right. I forgot I added this one. This guy right here. Yeah, it's expensive. Almost $300,000. But it is 12.8 meters, 270 horsepower. I think we would have to use our Fent. Oh no, we could use the Kloss for that. Good, okay. So yeah, that's the one I think we will shoot for if it comes up on sale. Hopefully, that would be wonderful. I really like this Bargol too. This guy here. I haven't had a chance to use these Borgols yet. I think they're Canadian made, actually. But I do like this cedar quite a bit. I think it's 8 meters. 8 meters. 240 horse. Not too shabby. 18 kilometers an hour versus this, which is 20 kilometers an hour. So maybe we will stick with the old John Deere. Yeah, I would really like to get this on the farm, though. I think that'd be... Super handy. Let's hope it shows up in the sale. <laughs> Let's hope it shows up for sale. Otherwise, we're going to be going into further debt. And if I'm being honest, we're making pretty good money each month on our passive. So I'm not super worried about our debt yet. Well, that rhymed. Our debt yet. Let's see if we can get uh, a little bit of unloading from our combine here. So I went and picked up a couple of packages today from the Amazon Hub. Now, have you all seen this thing, this Amazon Hub? Do you have one? Do you use an Amazon Hub? It's, it's a curious thing. So it's like a big set of lockers, right? And a big U shape. And basically you get an email your packages get delivered there instead of to your door. You get an email with a QR code, so you walk in, so you walk up to the hub. There's a little screen in the center of it, and you it scans this QR code, right? And then it opens the drawer or the door where your package is. And there's all different kinds of sizes. There's small, medium, large um, package areas so to speak and of course Amazon advertises it <clears throat> of course it's being you know it's super beneficial to you you know it's all about how it benefits you we all know that at the end of the day the thing is designed because Amazon's getting tired of reimbursing people for their packages getting ripped off at their door or I don't know if Amazon reimburses or if um, the, the delivery service reimburses. I mean, for the most part, Amazon, I think, delivers most of my packages now. Generally speaking, it's almost always Amazon. Um, I rarely get UPS or the Postal Service delivering packages from Amazon anymore. So, yeah, so they're doing their thing, right? And, of course, I guess the one benefit it is to you is if a signature is required it's kind of handy because you don't have to be at home when your package is delivered 
they'll still put it in the hub even if a signature is required. So I guess that is the one positive. Otherwise, it's it's totally, you know, if people would stop ripping off people's packages, it, that would be helpful. But anyways, so I get my packages delivered there. And I went there today and picked up a couple things. One of them was a, uh, I think it was an SSD, an NVMe SSD drive or something like that for my son's PC. I'm finishing that thing off. And it worked out pretty well, but I wonder what would happen. My fear is this, like if you've got more than one package, it says like, oh, you know, you scan one QR code, even if you get two emails, it says, oh, you've got two packages. And it opens up the first one door first because they, I think they generally only put one package per locker, I think. But my fear is I'm, I'm gonna grab my package out of there and I'm gonna not look there's a second package in there. I'm going to close the door because if you do that and you go back to the little computer and try to open it again, it says, nope, you already opened that locker. Good luck to you. So I can just see right now having to call Amazon. Hey, I screwed up. I accidentally closed the locker. I still have a package in there. It's just, I can see that being a little bit of a nightmare, but you know, that's me, Debbie Downer. I'm looking at this thing from a what could go wrong kind of perspective. I also, though, had a package delivered to my door today because it was huge. It was way too big for the locker, for the for the hub. And it's one of these... Well, it's a beanbag chair. Now, like, I guess everything else... You can't just have a normal beanbag chair anymore, right? Like old school, like 1970s beanbag chairs... I don't even know if you can get one like that anymore because the beanbag chairs that they have now all have this special, you know, there's special beans inside and they're, <clears throat> you know, they're like designed to shape to your body and all this other nonsense. But this beanbag chair isn't just your normal big old blob thing. It's like a chair. It, it looks like a shrunken down lazy boy it even has a side pocket and a cup holder on the side it's yeah it's that i think it's like called big joe's or big steve's or big bob's beanbag chairs it's you get them on amazon and it actually wasn't very expensive it's actually it seems to be built like made really well i think the fabric and everything is Actually, I was pretty impressed with how well it's put together. And it's comfortable as I'll get out. I'll give you that. And it came in this big box that was completely ripped open. Wasn't sealed. The box can be made into a castle. Yep, you heard me right. There's instructions on, on this box to make it into, like, a castle. It's actually a pretty good idea. Because I'm assuming most normal people buy these beanbag chairs for kids rooms I bought it so one of my sons will have a, a chair kind of a, a comfortable place to sit while he's playing while he's gaming on his Xbox I think he'll really like it for that but um, yeah this thing's built like a tank actually the seams look really good I was actually really impressed and for the price it wasn't very expensive um, but it just kind of cracks me up because when you read the description of it, you know, it's not just normal beans. Now, if I remember old beanbag chairs from like the 70s and the 80s and maybe even earlier, I don't know when beanbag chairs first came out, but I remember having a beanbag chair when I was a kid and that thing was super comfortable but I think the stuffing was more like literally like beans <laughs> I don't know what they were I don't think they were bean beans but they were definitely more substantial and and it was heavier I need to pop this thing open actually I should I should I should open it up and 
and see what the things look like inside. I think you can buy replacement stuffing too for them. Because the more you sit in them and stuff, maybe the, the stuffing kind of goes south on it and gets squished down. But uh, I highly recommend it if you're looking for something not too expensive that you can even, you know, put away if you want to. But it's just kind of a simple thing. I like it. I like it quite a bit. I'm forgetting that we're actually doing harvesting here and I'm just yapping about beanbag chairs. Go figure. It looks like, from what I can tell, I was pleasantly surprised at least, or kind of happy to see that I think the market is actually starting to adjust itself once again when it comes to computer components. I think the price is starting to come back to normal, which is nice to see. For a while there, over the last two, three, or four years, Things were getting pretty out of hand. But I think we're starting to see a slide back to normality. Which I'm happy about. I also see Giants is soon to release their mobile game. Farming Simulator 23. Now I have played two of the mobile games. I played... Was it 21? And what was the one before that? Was it 18? They're kind of... They changed at some point odds and evens or something. But anyways, I've played the last two of the mobile farming simulator games. <clears throat> I've actually enjoyed them quite a bit. Um, I, I don't put the hours into them like I do the uh, regular PC game. But I'm looking forward to seeing what they have going on here on this latest version. I play on an iPad. The one thing that I always found kind of annoying is just the controls a little bit for the tractors get some taking used to, get some getting used to. I'm actually thinking about, I think you can hook up a game controller to your mobile device, like an iPad or something like that. I'm kind of thinking about doing that and seeing if that's a little makes it a little bit more fun. But then at that point, if you're sitting there with a game controller playing on an iPad, I kind of have to ask myself, why don't I just go to my computer and play the full game? But I did have been able to kill some time on mobile farm sim so we'll see and I forget how much it is is it like five bucks was it like five bucks last time it's usually not very expensive I don't know if they have in-game purchases as well I'm not sure if they do that or not I think they do don't they and then there's that other farming game mobile game that's supposed to be coming out I, I really haven't even seen a release date on that one yet. Um, is it American Farming? And I think it's by The Squad, if I'm not mistaken. They've got a YouTube channel. That might be kind of interesting. I think recently I saw a release or a note from them, kind of an update saying that they got a new brand on, on board. So I'm not sure what their time frame looks like for getting that game released. A little competition never hurts though, right? It's too bad. <clears throat> what is it? Uh, cattle and crops? Is that what it was called? It's kind of too bad that lost Steam early on. It was looking pretty good for a while there. I was really excited about it. It had some features to it that were... A little more advanced, even, than Farming Simulator. wonder what ever happened to that. They must have just lost financing. Maybe it didn't sell as well as they were hoping. I don't know. It's too bad, though. I would have liked to have seen that take off and... We were getting some good frame rate, uh... 
Some good frame rate hits right there, aren't we? I wonder what's going on there. That was getting a little jittery, wasn't it? Looks like it's cleared up. I'm not sure if you saw that or if that was just on my end, but... Oh, what you doing there, mister? Uh, maybe he's going to work on the headlands now. Yeah, I think he's driving off to work on the headlands. We can go on load. We're pretty full. Let's go see what he's... I uh, wonder where he is going. Oh, he's probably going to go up here and work on this area where it kind of jets out. <clears throat> yeah, I bet that's what he's doing. All right. <coughs> Excuse me. So once this field gets knocked out, our harvesting will be done, like I said, except for the sunflowers, which I think have at least a couple more months until they can be rounded up. And we'll just need to get some field prepping done. Maybe pay some bills. Hopefully get to a point where we can get... Um, some more animals going here pretty soon too that'd be nice i think we need to work on getting our cow count up have a couple ideas for another barn to put in place kind of working out the plans with heinrich getting all the construction equipment and supplies brought in from the mainland are we on an island i guess i never really thought about that I talk about everything coming in on the boat, but maybe we are kind of on an island. I don't know. Interesting. Or maybe it's just more practical to have things shipped via the boat, boat freight, even if we're not on an island. I don't know. It doesn't look like there's uh, <laughs> any major highways coming coming into our area here that's for sure I'm back I'm back for some unloading there you go a nice look I'm getting off track here though oh he kept dumping getting out of your way because I'm not sure what you're going to want to do next. Hopefully not drive into the river. So I think from here we're going to have to start planning our next crops. It looks like we've got wheat and barley coming up. Canola next month if we want. Otherwise I might leave a couple of these fields vacant. Boy, it's always tough to leave fields vacant. We could do... We could do a silage deal. We could do some grass. We could probably plant a couple fields of grass. I think we're getting low on hay. I'll have to look and see what our storage looks like for our TMR. But if we wait... Boy, that's waiting half a year before... Um, Shoot, before sunflowers comes back around, oats, potatoes, sugar beets. Wouldn't mind doing some cotton. Corn is quite a ways away. So even if we planted uh, wheat, we wouldn't be able to harvest that until, well, unfortunately, past corn and, yeah, it's always tough. We, maybe we'll create some more fields. Maybe we'll get some land and 
try and create some more fields somewhere too, but we'll see how that all wraps up. But hey everyone, thank you so much for joining me again here today on Hinterland. I'm going to call it an episode. I'll get this field wrapped up. I'll be back with you tomorrow. I appreciate you all joining me. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video, of course, and subscribe if you'd like. Always appreciate that. Let me know what you think about the audio. Still working on trying to get some levels good on the mic, but I think we're getting closer. And um, always, uh, always looking forward to hearing from you in the comments. Take care of yourselves, take care of each other, and I will see you back here real soon. Bye for now.